Hi, I'm Ria Chergu, AI software architect and evangelist at Intel. And today I'm excited to introduce you to our new Edge AI reference kit on explainable AI. Data and model explainability are quickly becoming a critical part of data scientists and AI engineers workflows because they help us pinpoint issues as part of our data and model workflows. If there are issues that we don't identify as part of our data preparation process, it can quickly turn into issues for our AI model, both during the training process and inference. In this Edge AI reference kit, we're going to show you how to leverage the open source Datamaro library in order to be able to generate data quality measurements. For example, checking for imbalanced labels and undefined attributes. We're also going to show you how to leverage OpenVINO to generate optimized models and its integration with Ultralytics to create heat maps or saliency maps so you can better understand whether or not your object detection model is focusing on the right part of the image. Let's go ahead and dive in. As part of this Edge AI reference kit, we've prepared a number of different files to help you get started with the fundamentals. One of the files is a Jupyter notebook offering a step-by-step -step explanation of data quality measurements, as well as heat map generation and everything else you'll need, including hyperlinks to other resources. We also include a readme file that's providing detailed information regarding what to do, the steps that you need to take, and more context. And finally, we have a requirements.txt file to walk you through the dependencies that you'll need to reproduce this on your setup. Let's go ahead and dive into the details of the Jupyter Notebook. One of the first steps I'm going to do here is go ahead and install what I need as part of the requirements, and then download my dataset for this application. In this case, for this Edge AI reference kit, I'm leveraging the very popular Cocoa 2017 dataset for optic detection and semantic segmentation. You're welcome to use your own custom dataset or another dataset here as well. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and download the data and then unzip it and prepare it locally. Next step, analyze the quality of the data. This is where we go ahead and import our Datamaro library and load in our local Coco dataset, or in other words, import it. We're then going to define the subset that we'll use as the validation 2017 subset. Again, here you're free to pick another subset like the training data, depending on the data that you use. Now, what I'm going to do here is really quickly define a very quick function that's handy to help me find items with given labels in my data set. What this means is I can start to figure out the types of data that's part of the subset that I've created. For example, when I run this function with the label car, I can see a bunch of the IDs or images that have the car label with them. Let's go ahead and start to do some of our filtering. Now, Coco 2017 is a huge data set. And in this case, I want to apply explainable AI for a use case in the transportation domain, where I'm looking at smart cities and how cars, buses, trains, and other objects are detected over time for a variety of different applications. While this notebook is dealing primarily with transportation, there's a number of other verticals that can benefit from explainability, including healthcare, retail, banking, and so much more. So in order to filter it specifically to transportation, we can leverage Datamaru's dot filter mechanism in order to filter by certain labels that we define, like car, bus, train, truck, and street sign, and much more. Now, if we go ahead and run the find item with given label name function on bus, we can get all of the images corresponding to the bus label. But if we run this with the person label, we're actually not going to get any results because the data has been successfully filtered to only include labels relevant for transportation. Now we're going to define a really quick function to get some random IDs or essentially images and labels from the data set. What's the purpose of this? Well, I'm going to go ahead and briefly visualize one data point from the data set. We're going to instantiate the datamara.visualizer instance and visualize just one sample. Now notice here the visualized sample. This is a visualization of a bus. And not only is it detected correctly with the category displaying, but we also see the object detection or the bounding box output, as well as the semantic segmentation output, highlighting the bus altogether. All right, let's go ahead now and dive into data quality measurements. In this step, we're going to use Datamaru's detection validator instantiation and create an automated data quality report. That's exactly what we're doing with the validate function here, walking through and identifying the anomaly types. Let's go ahead and skip to the summary that the validation report has pertained. In this case, the validation report summary is showing us a number of errors belonging to the undefined attribute category, along with a number of different warnings. Let's go ahead and take a deeper look. 
First, let's treat some of the selected data errors, looking at the undefined attribute. Now, diving a little bit deeper into the metadata of the Coco dataset, we actually find some attributes that aren't included as part of the original metadata. One of them is isCrowd. So in this case, let's go ahead and remove the undefined attribute errors directly. In this case, we don't have our defined attributes, and they're really not useful for our data set anyway. So we're going to go ahead and remove them, leveraging data tomorrow. First, we filter by the undefined attributes, and then we go ahead and loop through and remove them or reject them from the annotations in our sample. Now, if we regenerate the report, we can see that the errors have disappeared. So let's jump to the warnings. We're going to define a really quick function for visualizing the label IDs of our warning anomaly types. Now, let's get into imbalanced labels. Imbalanced labels are one of those issues that continue to be a really big pain point when it comes to data and models. This is where you have data in your data set that's corresponding to one category, having a lot of different data associated with it, and data corresponding to other categories having less amount of data. In this case, for example, with filtering with data tomorrow and generating our visualization, we see there's a lot of data in our subset corresponding to the car label, but not so much for traffic light and stop sign. This means that if we trained our model on this data set, or if we were to use it for inference, we're going to see that there's a lot more data corresponding to cars than traffic lights and stop signs. So if we want our model to better perform when it comes to these categories, we're going to have to gather additional data so that we can use it for the training and validation process. Next up, missing annotations. These can be pretty bad when it comes to not at all being useful for your analysis. With missing annotations, we may even find images like the one here that aren't even relevant to the subset that we selected. This isn't a problem with the filtering, it's just that there's no annotation selected for them or defined for them, so they don't really have a particular category or subset that they belong to. We can either choose to create annotations for these images manually or remove them altogether from our dataset. Another example is far from label mean, and this is a really interesting type of warning when it comes to data quality, something that can really mess up the downstream data analysis if it's not treated. In this one, we see bounding boxes that are stretched thin or stretched wide and essentially look pretty strange. For example, take a look at this output that we visualized by filtering on the far from label, far from label mean error. As you can see here, the bounding box is almost the entire width of the image, and this image is not even one of a car. It's actually one of a horse cart. So here we have two issues. One, we have an incorrect classification or categorization. And two, we have a bounding box that is way farther from the label mean of the object size. So one way to treat this again is to either delete the image or go ahead and correct both of the issues that we just identified. So we've just looked at data quality and a couple of different steps on how we can address some of these issues. Let's go ahead now and turn to model explainability. What if I want to use an optimized model um, as part of an edge device for my transportation use case? Let's take a look at using a optimized YOLO V8 OpenVINO model that's been converted from the FP32 precision to FP16. The reason why we do this is to lower the model footprint and the model size. So for example, the model can be deployed as part of an edge device, like an aerial drone that's scanning highways and freeways for any accidents or collisions. Now, as part of this, we can leverage OpenVINO's integration with Ultralytics to get some great saliency maps or heat map capabilities that show us where the model is focusing at a given point in time. In this case, we're going to start by getting our YOLO V8 model from Ultralytics and then converting it using the OpenVINO format, with the conversion to the FP16 precision happening directly in the backend. Next, we're going to go ahead and generate a heat map leveraging Ultralytics YOLO model.track capabilities. Here, we're going to start by sending some of our video writer and initialization related elements, and then we simply run the model.track capability and then generate heat maps as we go. And then this is going to actually generate heat maps leveraging our optimized OpenVINO model. Let's go ahead and turn to the output to see what it looks like. Now, as we can see here with the output, we're seeing heat maps being generated with this video showing and tracking an object's movements over time. Now, if our model were to focus on the nearby trees or something else, then we would know that it's focusing on the wrong parts of the image. However, in this case, it's seeming to accurately detect and track our cars over time, telling us that the model, in this case, the YOLO V8 model, is performing really well when it comes to object detection. So in this way, saliency maps and heat maps can help confirm that the model is doing the right thing, looking at the right areas of the image, and that we're able to track these objects over time with these types of capabilities.
And that concludes the Explainable AI Kit walkthrough. You're very welcome to contribute to these conversations and go ahead and try the kit yourself by heading over to the Open Video Notebooks GitHub repository page and trying it out and letting us know your feedback. Thank you.